terrific year for John Mullins in 2007, and it's going to be capped now by the success of Blonde Genie, who wins the William Hill Oaks final. That classic triumph crowned a superb 2007 for John Mullins. Along with Mark Wallace, John pushed Charlie Lister close for the trainer's title. And success on the track boosted still further the growing reputation of his Suffolk base, which he built with the help of leading owner Mark Currell. It's now very much a centre for British breeding, with John's wife Debbie looking after the pups and John leading a team prepared to travel all over the country in the quest for open race wins. John, what gives you most pleasure? Is it the breeding side, the racing side? Winning. Winning. Um, but winning with your own dogs, dogs that you've reared, that you've watched grow up, that you've started off schooling, and that you've thought, hmm, maybe, and they go off schooling, come back, and away you go. And to win with your own dog that you've reared and that is English. John, of course, comes from good greyhound stock. Late father Pat won a derby. Mum Linda has bred champions aplenty. She's done fantastic over her time with Palace Issue, uh, sports promoter. He was ground of the year, Palace Issue was ground of the year. Um, she's had uh, loads of them, um, Kensington's, uh, the Apapas, uh, Magicals. Um, she's done brilliant. We haven't uh, achieved anything like that, not yet anyway. What would be the ultimate success or is that just too obvious a question? The ultimate, the ultimate dream, my ultimate ambition, and I believe it can happen, is to have the dog, train the dog that wins all three derbies. I've always, you know, I'd love to win the derby anyway, obviously, I really would. It would be the ultimate. But I'd love to train the dog that wins all three. And I believe, like Darren Keefe does, that Barnfield, uh, with his dog, yeah, I believe it can be done. I don't think it's an impossibility. Uh, of course, it goes down to luck, but then any, everything in life does. If you put the work in, you've got to put the work in. It's not going to happen, and it's not going to come to you. But uh, I believe it can be half done. If you had to choose between two dogs to come into your kennel, and there was Barnford on air on the left and Bally under on the right, which one would you take in? Bally under. Why? I saw it run at Reading when he first started off, and we had a pup run against it, and I went into Matt afterwards, and uh, he beat us fair and square, no questions about it. And I said to him then, do you rate that dog? And he said, yeah, we think it could be, a, you know, at that time. And I got a pup run against it then that um, he checked up the third one. He was never going to beat it. But it, I came away thinking, yes, I'm happy with that. But the following week, he ran against Hackney Carriage and she broke and it destroyed us. You know, it really went about its job right. And it's only a pup and we were experienced campaigner. And I went into Matt afterwards and I said, yeah, that's a proper dog. Um, and he's come along from then, they've done fantastic, and good luck to him, really mean it. Um, but what it done in the juvenile was, you know, it was like it was steering its way around it, and, and it destroyed dogs, top class dogs. Um, and it can do it from both ways, uh, it's only a baby, uh, so I'll take that one here. Off that slow start, he's gone round in front too, follow Hurricane up in the second, they can fire, follow Reason as they come up towards the line, it's Bally Mac under, it's another He's still a young pup, not many races under his belt. What have you got in your kennel that uh, maybe could hit the headlines like those two? Nothing. Not, well, jokes aside, no, seriously. You've got to be realistic. Dogs like that come along once in a lifetime. Um, they're, fan they're different, they're different players, like Spirit and Louis. They're different. They keep winning and they're fast with it. And there's no flaw in them. Um, and it annoys me that you get people, the great British public, it doesn't matter whether it's dogs, motor racing, anything that's winning, they'll try to say it's this or it's got that fault. And the bottom line is just jealousy. Because if you give them a collar and lead, they'll take their dog on, just like anyone else. Another performance which really impressed John last year was Westmead Lord's brilliant front-running win in the Derby final at Wimbledon. As he spin round the final bend, it's still in front, Westmead Lord. Hulet Connors trying to close. I think we met, witnessed last year's derby winner, greatness in Nick Sever in the final. I really did. Then, I know he's the best, but to watch that dog win that final the way he did, when you had dogs turn behind him, 600 stairs at Shelbourne and this, that and the other, 
I think we witness greatness. You know, and that to me, in any sport, is something that I like watching. And you see something that pulls ex out that extra bit to win, the will to win, um, and he feeds it through to his dogs. John Mullins will be working towards another winner-laden year, with the likes of Blondino here and Queen of the Kennel Blondini very much classic contenders again.